Thank God for women, am I right? Especially women in anime. There are so many anime out there that have some of the most gorgeous women, and Code Geass is no exception. So today, I'm going to rank what I believe to be the most beautiful women in Code Geass. So I'm a bit burned out from making the video on Lelouch and Shirley's relationship, and the differences between the films and the original anime, so I figured, hey, let's do a lighthearted video instead. I'm going to do a couple of these in the next couple of weeks, just because, again, those videos were a little difficult to do, and I'm a bit burned out. Now, a couple of disclaimers before I start. Number one, and this is really the most important, don't take this video that seriously. This is a grown man discussing which of the fictional anime characters he thinks is the prettiest, or I should say, I think is the prettiest. I'm going to be spoiling parts of the Code Geass but mostly light spoilers. I'm only talking about the women in reference to their looks and personalities, not the role in the story. And these women can come from any Kogia series. I'm not just looking at the original anime. It can even be from the mangas, the OVAs, or even the new films. And one more thing. As I get older, discussing teenagers in this way is kind of weird. So to remove this, imagine for a moment that everyone on this list is around during the Lush of the Resurrection, which is three years after the Lush of the Rebellion. So everyone is at least 18. Still, it's kind of weird, but it ain't illegal. If characters' ages are never stated, I'm going to assume they're over 18. Now, the vast majority of the women on this list are over 20, so this is only going to apply in a few cases. And one more thing, I promise, this is the last thing. Before we begin, if you enjoy my Kogias content and want more like it, and future anime content in general, please consider subscribing to the channel. I normally wouldn't ask this, but I'm getting close to 1,000 subscribers, and I'd like to hit that milestone sooner than later. And once I do, I have major plans to improve this channel, that will mostly be to your benefit. It is tradition to make a top 10 list to rank stuff like this, but I couldn't get this down to 10. So instead, these are the 15 most beautiful women in Code Geass. Number 15, Shamna. The religious leader of Zilkstan, the blonde bombshell. Not to mention, she has beautiful blue eyes. And like most women in Code Geass, she is well endowed. Even her clothes can't contain her certain assets. Shamna is not just a pretty face, she also knows how to dress, and as a priestess, she never disappoints with her unique outfits. It's one of the ways she stands out from the other lovely ladies in the series. Did I mention she has beautiful eyes? Because she really does. Now, even though she's the villain in Luke of the Resurrection, I respect her desire to help her people and her brother. She's not like the worst person ever because I understand her point of view. Now, obviously, what she does to not only Anne Lelouch was not okay, obviously, but I get where she was coming from. She's just low on the list, though, because while I do love her design, I think the creators might have tried a little too hard trying to make her attractive looking. And to their credit, they do succeed, so she made the list. Plus, she has a badass Gias power. So that's Shamna, number 15 on the list. Number 14, Millie Ashford. Okay, before you get the pitchforks here, just hear me out, okay? Millie is one of my least favorite characters in the series. That's why she's lower on the list. But I can't deny that she's not beautiful. I mean, she has been accurately described as having the best body in Code Geass. And yeah, those people are right. I mean, she has the largest bust and the best proportions. And if you want to go beyond that, she has beautiful blue eyes and nice blonde hair. And kudos for her for keeping that hair at normal length. There are so many women in the series that have absurd length and hair. And while in the Code Geass or in any anime in general, it makes sense. It would in real life. So I like the realism in how she stylizes her hair. She was very very obnoxious as a school president, but after graduation, I started to like the character more, and her post-school look is gorgeous, especially how they designed her in Luke's of the Resurrection. Millie's a very beautiful woman with a good heart, even if sometimes her behavior annoys the heck on me, especially during her time at Ashford Academy. I can see why Rival likes her a lot. That's number 14, Millie Ashford. Number 13, Alderan Zephon. She is also known as Oz, which is a creative nickname given the Wizard of Oz themes in Oz the Reflection. In case you did not know, she's from that manga. Much of the two previous entries on this list, Alderaan is a blonde, but with green eyes this time. She's more adorable compared to Millie or Shanda, and at times acts immature. She looks great in just about anything she wears. I think she looks best in the uniform she wears when piloting the Lancelot High Grail. But her most attractive trait is her desire to help her friends. She might get angry at them, she might overreact, but it's just an act. She really cares about them. She's an amazing girl that any guy would be lucky to have. I hope one day we get to experience this character in an adaptation of Oz the Reflection as part of the 10-year Kogias project. That was Older and Zephan, number 13. Number 12, Sophie Randall. Sophie's from Akito the Exile and is one of the lead scientists in the W0 unit. She specializes in studying the brain. Now, when you first watch Akito the Exile and see this character, you'll most likely first see that she wears an open clothing, which reveals her incredible bust. She's also quite tall and slim, which is never a bad thing. Now, if you look past all the physical attributes, you'll see the real reason why she's very attractive. She's a brilliant woman, and that's what caught my attention when this character's on screen. 
Even though her husband was in a coma, she never stopped fighting for him. She was very loyal to him, and with a body and brains like those, she could have moved on to any other guy, but she didn't. And that shows how incredible and underrated she is. And I was very happy when she was reunited with her husband at the end of Akito the Exiled. An incredible woman, very underrated in Akito the Exiled. Number 12, Sophie Randall. Number 11, Ayano Kosaka. Ayano was 15 in Akito the Exiled. That's why this clear was even made because discussing her in her current age is kind of creepy and illegal. Now, where to start with Ayano? Let's see. She's gorgeous, independent, knows how to fight, knows what she wants in life, and is not afraid to go after it. Not to mention she's an excellent nightmare frame pilot and looks great in a hoodie. When we look past her obvious physical beauty, she actually has a lot of deep personal things going on in her life. She's clearly gone through a lot, and we see that when she talks to Jean towards the end of Akito the Exiled. She's lost friends and past lovers. Ayano has no problems expressing her feelings to her friends or complete strangers, which takes a lot of courage. She's very mature, and you can tell she had to grow up very fast. She dresses very well. I like the different hairstyles, especially with the pigtails. That's actually my favorite. She's an incredible woman who is not afraid to cry in the arms of her loved ones and fight for those she cares about. That was number 11, Ayano Kosaka. Number 10, Naomi Inoue. I joked on a stream once that no one knows who this character even is. Well, for those who forgot, Naomi is one of the founding members of the Resistance group that became the Black Knights. And I've always found Naomi to be very attractive in the series, aside from the indigo hair color. If you pay attention, you'll notice that her assets are actually more impressive than the fan favorite Colin Kozaki. But I will admit, Colin has the prettier face. I wish she had more screen time so we could have learned more about her. I assume she's intelligent since she ran many of Lucia's missions and she can pod Nightmare Frame. In the video game Lost Colors, we get more scenes of her to develop her personality, but I still don't know much about her. If I did, she might have been higher on this list. In general, I wish she had a bigger role in the story, and her death was one of the most tragic scenes in all of Kogias. That was number 10, Naomi Inoue. Number 9, Valetta New. Now, this woman is considered by many to be one of the most attractive women in Kogias, and... I'm one of those people who feels that way. And it's not hard to see why. I mean, Valletta has a slim build, nice hair. She's a well-developed character. I find her proportions to be more realistic when compared to other women in the series. But for me, her intelligence and ambitions are a turn-on. That's my favorite aspect to her. She has goals and she's striving to achieve them. And she can kill you in more ways than one. I'm not sure how Ogi did it, but kudos to him for tying the knot with Valletta. Who would have thought that a pure blood Britannian would marry a Japanese man? That was number nine, Valletta New. Number eight, Rakshara Chalia. When it comes to intelligence, this woman is the queen. I don't know why, but her sarcastic and insulting remarks only add to my appreciation for this beautiful woman. She is passionate about her research and is really brilliant. I know I said it several times, but I mean it. I love when she outsmarts Lloyd in the entire series. But unlike Lloyd, she's not just doing this for research, but she legitimately wants to help her Indian people. And I really respect that. I did always find it odd why she never closes her shirt, but I guess when you have a body like that, you really don't have to. It doesn't hurt that she's voiced by Laura Bailey. Obviously, she has a typical large bust, long hair, and a nice, tall, slim body. All I gotta say, if Lloyd rejected her, then you, sir, are an idiot. To me, Rakshada is a brilliant woman whose beautiful body is only matched by her intelligence. And because of that, only the best of men can handle her. That was number eight, Rakshada Chalia. Number seven, Jean Ro. Jean Ro was from Akito the Exiled, and just like Ashley, they were both orphans that were found by Shin Huga. They both serve him in the Order of Michael. John is unique compared to most women in Kogias. Instead of the typical short or long wavy straight hair, she has a nice short bushy hair, which has a nice red color. I happen to like redheads in general, especially in anime. The only person who has any kind of hair that's comparable is Nina, but even that is slightly longer. John also has a nice slim athletic body with a small bust and nice glowing skin. It was a nice change of pace to see a powerful woman in Kogias who was given a more realistic look when compared to the typical female body design that's used in the majority of the women in Kogias. John is all business in the army, but will express her feelings to those she cares about. It was really sad how Shen never returned her love and abused her throughout Akito the Exiled. The problem with Jean is she was willing to do anything for Shin so he would love her in return. In reality, she needed to do what was best. And as I liked about this character, she learned from her past mistakes and grew. I was happy that Shin accepted her love. I just wish it didn't have to come with the expense of her dying. Until my recent watch of Akito the Exiled, I never realized how beautiful Jean really is. I wanted to put her even higher, but Seven's pretty good considering the buxoms that she beat to get on this list. Shin, you didn't realize what you had, you stupid fool. That was number seven, Jean Rowe. 
Number six, Colin Kozaki. If some of you were annoyed by how low I put Millie on this list, then some people are going to be straight out pissed that I put Colin at number six. But just keep in mind, just because Colin is ranked six does not mean she's ugly because she clearly isn't. She's just not the prettiest in my eyes, okay? And remember, it's just my opinion. But let's talk about why Colin is so gorgeous. It's her face and not her bust. Her hair is also amazing, regardless if it's spiky or straight out. I paused so many times during the show just to admire the nice design of it. I've stated many times my favorite Colin moment is in turn 18 when she saves the loot, specifically when she says, Zero, I'm here. Your elite guard, Colin Kozaki, is back on the battle line. One of the reasons why I like that scene so much is because we see a close-up of her face, and you really appreciate her beautiful blue eyes and wonderful hair. That scene with her with the flower in her hair to start loose the resurrection also melts my heart every time I watch that movie. Now, I've not said anything about her body, but it's a 10 out of 10, okay? There's, there's no need to talk about it. Personality-wise, Colin is a great combination of kindness and aggression. She's nice and innocent to her friends and family members. For example, she gets embarrassed when discussing romance and love. That's why I love when she kisses Lelouch with such confidence because the whole time she never really was able to handle those situations, so to see it there was great. But when it comes to combat and fighting those she hates, for example, like Sazak Kurugi, you see she gets very aggressive and angry. Sometimes it does cloud her judgment, but deep down, I think her kindness is overtakes her aggression. She's very close to the Black Knights and sees them as family. Despite her flaws, she's a great person and amazing nightmare frame pilot. Not to mention her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills are very impressive. Did I mention she can also do flips and is a straight-A student? There's a reason why many consider her to be the best girl in Kogias. That was number six, Colin Kozaki. Number five. Layla Macau. Layla is yet another character on this list from Akito the Exiled. What attracted me early on to this character is her personality. She just seems too good to be true, which makes sense. She is a fictional character. Layla would do anything for those she cares about, and much like Euphemia, she wanted to treat the Eleventh as equals and hate her government's racist treatment of them. She has nice blonde hair, and the color is actually quite unique compared to the other blondes in Kogias. And even though her hair is obnoxiously long, I do like some of the cute hairstyles she has, including some that remind me of Serena or Miyaka from Sailor Moon and Fushugi Yugi, respectively. Layla has an incredible body with an above average chest and impressive curves. And much like Colin, her face is her best physical trait. It's very pretty. She has such innocent but also serious eyes. They are the kind where you can just get lost for hours staring into them. Anyways, let's talk more about her innocence. Layla is so cute when she fails to do basic chores with the gypsies. I did admire her willingness to try and that she wanted to be useful. For someone so young, she's quite mature. When the gypsies compliment her beauty, it didn't embarrass her, and this maturity also shown while she leads the W0 unit. In general, she is very comfortable with herself and not afraid to express her feelings privately or publicly. Akito is very lucky to have a beautiful and devoted woman by his side. Oh, and don't mess with her because you'll learn the other reason why the OVA is called Akito the Exiled. This was number 5, Layla Macau. Number 4, Nagisa Chiba. Now, some may question why she ranks this high on the list. I mean, beyond her bust size, her design is very plain, which extends to her hair and face. And this plain look was an asset to me because it made her personality stand out more. Now, I won't deny that she's in physically excellent shape besides the big bust. She's also an excellent nightmare frame pilot and a soldier in her own right. Nagisa is very interesting because no matter how many battles she's been on, she still gets very nervous and embarrassed when discussing her feelings about Toto. And it's not like Nagisa is not afraid to speak her mind. She's always one of the first people to challenge Zero on his decisions, as well as the other members of the Black Knights. She doesn't hold back her feelings, and neither should she. What makes me favorite Nagisa, among others on this list, is her plain but pretty look, excellent ability as a fighter, her tenacity, and her cute innocence off the battlefield. That was number four, Nagisa Chiba. Number three, Cornelia Lee Britannia. One of my favorite women in anime is Olivier Mira Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. You want to know why? because she's a gorgeous woman who can kick ass and command authority as a leader. Cornelia is no different. I find her to be more attractive than Olivier, but not by much. Cornelia's most defined physical trait is her large size bust, but to me it's her face. There are some moments in the show where, much like Colin, I just pause the video to admire Cornelia's pretty face, especially her eyes and hair. Compared to the rest of the royal family, the combination of her hair color and eye color are a perfect match. Besides being a badass, a brilliant military strategist, and easy on the eyes, she's also 
very caring to those important in her life. When she's around Yuffie, you would not believe this is the same woman that people fear on the battlefield. They did a great job balancing the two aspects of her characters. She showed kindness to her loved ones and no mercy to her enemies. I know her outfit in R2 was disgraceful, but if you look past that, Cornelia is one of the most gorgeous women in Kogias. And that's why she is number three on this list. Number two, C2. I'm not taking any risks by suggesting that C2 is a fan favorite in Kogias. The Immortal Witch is quite popular among the guys, many of which consider her to be their waifu. But when I think of C2, the hardships of her past and how it shaped her future come to mind. Being immortal made her cold to others, because what's the point of being close to someone if you're going to outlive them anyways, which happened so many times in C2's existence. This is why her relationship with Felucia is amazing. For the first time since Dash, C2 opened up to someone, and when she did, we get to see the real her. I might be alone here, but C2's personality and attitude is what makes her attractive. Physically, her body is about average, and it doesn't stand out when compared to the other buxoms. I'm not saying it's not impressive, but again, compared to other buxoms, not really. I do like her golden eyes, though, and in fact, I think she's the only character who has golden eyes. I'm now going to gush about my favorite aspects of her personality that are really the most appealing. So she's very confident in herself. C2 has no issues changing in front of Lelouch, discussing ideas of others, knowing that they won't believe her. She just does her own thing without caring what others think. When C2 does care about her appearance, the outfits and her hair combinations are memorable and quite diverse. I guess being immortal gives you time to work on your appearance and fashion sense. C2 just might have the best smile in anime, period. It just comes from a genuine place. When someone has gone through that level of hardship, a smile like that is genuine and says something about the person who got her to smile. Considering C2 seems to be depressed throughout most of Kogias, you realize how important Lush was in her life when he got her to smile again. The last aspect of C2 is her loyalty. Much like Sophie Randall, she stayed with Lush even after the state he was in to start Lush of the Resurrection. And just like Sophie, anyone who has that kind of loyalty for another is an incredible person. For C2, it's even more incredible because it would be understandable for someone who has been hurt so many times in her life not to want to help others or to abandon them. It's no surprise why C2 is the most popular woman in Kogias and on most people's top waifus list even to this day, even though it's been over a decade since the release of Kogias, the Lush of the Rebellion. That was number two, C2. Now before we get to number one, here are the honorary mentions. The women that are also very pretty, but just didn't make the list. Marianne. I did include her because even though she is very physically attractive, her personality, not so much. And what she did to Nully and Lelouch kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. I like Shirley and Euphemia's characters, but I never found them attractive looking, at least to compare to everyone else on the list. If we had gotten more scenes of Dorothea or Monica, they definitely would have made the cut because both of those ladies are very beautiful, but for some reason, we don't see much of them. And finally, number one, Nina Einstein. Now, some of you might be surprised with this pick, but come on, hear me out, guys. Nina is an ambitious woman, perhaps a little crazy, but she works hard. She gained confidence later on and grew as a person. Just like Jean, the body type doesn't matter. The personality, and Nina's personality is, is, all right, all right, all right. I can't keep this charade going. Nina is not the number one most beautiful one in Kogias. Hopefully, no one rage quit after her naming. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Okay, I apologize. Here is the actual number one most beautiful woman in Kogias, and that is Cecile Krumi. Anyone who's been following me at this point knows that Cecile is my favorite character in Kogias, period. That means among men and the women. She is the perfect combination of intelligence and beauty. Her genuine kindness is a good match to Lloyd's sociopath attitude. Cecile's kindness never falls into coming across as naive. Many times she can cut you up in the most friendliest way possible. I respect how she treats others. For example, she never showed any racism towards the Japanese people. I mean, she fell in love with Suzaku according to the picture drama drama in R2, but more importantly, she just wanted to help people in her life that she could, including both Suzaku and Lush, during their journeys that involved her in Kogias. Cecile is so fun to hang out with because she has so many interesting hobbies, including cooking weird recipes, gambling, and playing pool. I love her passion for her work. For example, it's adorable when she argues with Lloyd about who worked on the Guardian Satan 8 elements. She takes credit for the energy wings, for example. Now, from a looks department, Cecile is a perfect 10. Everything about her design is perfect. Perfection. Nice slender body, medium sized bust, and a hair that's perfect length. I'm aware this is a purely subjective thing, so I know that most people watching right now are not going to agree on this list, especially Cecile being number one, and that's fine. I'm curious to see what yours is later on. 
Cecile is so attractive that even though I normally don't have a waifu and don't even follow that culture, she'd actually be a waifu if I had to pick someone. And that's it guys, that is my top 15 most beautiful women in Kogias. I know this is not the video you were expecting or asking, but given how burned out I was from making the past videos, I needed something easier to make. If you enjoy the content, please like, share, and comment on the video. Check out my blog and anime streaming guide for April. I'll have the link in the description below. But now let me ask you guys, who is the most prettiest one in Kogias? Please give me your top 10, 15, 20, I don't care. Listen to comments below. If you want me to do other lists from Kogias, us or other anime let me know that in the comments as well and remember the world is not a dark place and tomorrow will be a good day thanks for watching